uh, I report an association of caring malformation type 1, CM1, and fertile disorders of connective tissue, HGCT, that can present with lower brainstem symptoms attributed, attributable to a occipital adult axial hypermobility and the functional brain setting. And I will try to standardize its method. Next slide, please. Okay. You're on the next. This slide shows conventional anatomical landmark lines. A, Chamberlain line. B, McGregor line. C, Leonard method. D, McRae line. F, Diagastric and bimastoid lines. G, Atlant Oxtal joint axis angle. Except for the line E, Wackenheim Cryobus line, all of other lines demonstrate vaginal impersonation. We need to have the method to demonstrate the instability of occipital atlant axial joints. Next slide, please. We I suggested that three appropriate, appropriate measurements demonstrated the instability of occipital atlant axial joints. Atlant density interval, ADI, is able to demonstrate atlant axial instability. Cryobus carol line, CXA, is able to demonstrate occipital atlant axial joint instability. Harris, J.H. in 1994 reported, Bajon Atlantal Interval, BAI, is able to demonstrate occipital Atlantal joint instability. Bajon Dental Interval, BDI, is able to occipital axial joint instability. Next slide, please. Care manifestations include a heterogeneous group of hind brain disorders that are characterized by herniation of the cerebral tonsils through the foramen mantle. To better understand the relationship of HDCT and CM1, we analyzed the cohort patients with CM1 and characterized the clinical features and radiographic findings. Next slide, please. The subject of this study was 3,817 patients with CM1. We evaluated the clinical features and radiological findings using 3D CT and brain X-rays. Osseous components of the cranial cervical junction were measured in 114 patients with HDCT with CM1. 55 age and sex matched patients with CM1 and normal controls. We compared these morphometric measurements in the spine, upright position, and extracted positions. Just for clarification, for HDCT for the audience is? Is the paint store up, up, uh, over five points? Yeah, the hereditary disorder of the connective tissue. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <coughs> uh, next slide, please. Slide six, we established a means for assessing occipital atlant axial motion by combining this method with a new measurement developed by us. We measured the interval between the vagina and the top of dense BDI. The interval between the vagina and plane of the posterior surface of anterior arch of atlas. Vagina atlas interval, BAI. The interval between the posterior surface of anterior arch of atlas and dense, atlas dense interval, ADI. And the interval between the top of dense and the lowest line of atlas, DAI. We measured the angle between the atlas and axis, line E and line D, AXA. The angle between the cribus and atlas, line C and line E, CAA. And the angle between the cribus and axis, line C and line D, CXA. Next slide, please. This slide shows the cranio-cervical traction test, setting the tongue while intravenous anesthesia by proper hole. 
the patient has no pain. Lying and sitting and traction, checking the neurological symptoms and performing the morphometric measurement using 3D CT. Next slide, please. After three slides, show results of radiological findings. Morphometric measurement of the, the craniocervical junction in the spine position demonstrated no significant differences in all parameters in patients with HDCT CM1, pure CM1, and normal controls. But there are no significant no no significant changes in baseline measurement of patient with CM1 and normal controls upon assumption of upright position. However, in patient with HCD CM1 assumption of the upright position, sitting position, resulted in a reduction of vaginal death interval BDI from mean of 7.7 .7 to 4.1 millimeter. By the traction, these were going up to 10.8. Functional ground setting of atlant occipital joint was demonstrated by decreasing of PDI in upright position. Next slide, please. In the upright sitting position, vaginal atlant interval PAI increased from a mean of 2.0 to 5.0 millimeter. By the traction, this was deduct, reduced to 1.5. Posterior grinding of the occipital condyles was uh, demonstrated by the increasing of the BAI in upright position. Next slide, please. In the upright sitting position, climbers death angle CXA decreased from a mean of five, 152 to 141 degrees. By the traction, this increased to 165. And the flexion of oxygen joint was demonstrated by decreasing of the CXA in the upright position. And also, anterior flexion of the atlant axial joint was demonstrated by decreasing of AXA in the upright position. Next slide, please. These are raw data before and after traction. Neurological symptoms and BDI, BAI, and CXA drastically changes. I manually believe that among of many morphometric markers, the BDI, BAI, and CXA are the, more, the most appropriate and reliable measurements. Next slide, please. <coughs> Recent experience with vertical MRI had proven to be helpful for understanding the dynamic features of hospital atlant axial hypermobility. Functional current setting was uh, associated with a notable soft tissue displacement that included the little portion of the little odd pants with increasing the basilar impression and also caudal descent of the cerebral tonsils with increasing impaction of the primary man. These displacements were quite consistent with the often pronounced symptoms and signs of lower brainstem dysfunctions and CSA flow disturbance at the primary magnum, which induced sync formation. Next slide, please. This slide shows some problems of measurement. There are my homework from Dr. Paul Adi. In drawing a canal line, which line do you use? I strongly recommend the left side. It is much better not to include the lateral odontal right thickness of a mass, because the lateral right odontal thickness and the mass are changing. Next, and in drawing the gravel line, which do you use? I strongly recommend it at uh, the left line, left line because the lower side of fibers has attachment of ligament, so it's part of have the effort of changing of ligament. The next slide, please. Heritage disorders of connective tissue, HCT, and fragility of ligament and trauma 
are able to induce hypermobility instability of osteoarthritic axial joints. Physiological conditions are functional cranial setting and posture grinding of the osteoarthritic condom. Just craniosurgical traction test if it is able to demonstrate this pathophysiological condition. Next slide, please. This is illustrated cases. Case a 17 year old female. This case has Down syndrome, severe anomaly in the craniosurgical junction. After confirming of the reaction of craniosurgical junction by craniosurgical traction test. We performed orthopedic surgical fixation. Anchor screw are bilateral pedicle screw for a C2, lateral mass screws for a C3 and C4. Connection to the oxidal plate using synthesis synapse. Next slide, please. This report uh, has been uh, published in the Journal of Neurosurgery Spine in this December. Uh, 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 December. In this report, we described a previously unrecognized association under CF1 and SCB. Evidence was presented to that patient with combined disorders exhibited at various, varying degrees of osteoarthritic axial hypermobility that result in the functional prosthetic of the displacement of cerebral tonsils and symptoms of referable to bladder impression. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nishikawa. Are there questions for Dr. Nishikawa? Dr. Henderson? Uh, uh, in your drawing of the clavoaxial angle, you preferred the lines on the right side but uh, Grab, Mapstone, and Oaks, when they describe their methodology, they decide that the dura is the logical um, position of the axial uh, of the line that they measure. And I should think that the presence of any soft tissue would cause ventral brainstem compression, and so therefore the penis formation should be included. Uh, within the axial line, and the line that you would use would be the one um, more of the um, the green line on the right side. Oh, uh, I think that I think that the red rodent masses in in according to the case and the personal changing of the red on the mask. So I want to have the reliable lines and the standardized right. I saw, I mandatory choose uh, the left side. Thank you. Yes, I think uh, to make uh, Dr. Henderson's point, one of the patients that I showed in the introduction also had a severe problem due to pandas formation uh, in the retrodontoid.